When will you evacuate Gaza? How do you and Abed know each other? How did you move from Dubai to Gaza? I had a near death experience a few days ago. Hey, it's Street Yusuf from Gaza, and for some reason, if you do not believe I'm from Gaza, look at this destroyed building right over there. That's enough proof that I am in Gaza. A few days ago, I put out a story on my Instagram page asking you guys to ask me some questions for this YouTube QA, and you guys delivered. So let's get started. Bruno asks, How do you pass time during the war? There are two ways I pass time. One is watching documentaries on YouTube, and two is by reading books. Let me show you. So I have this book stack right here. I bought these books back in Lafah. I'm sure some of you guys recognize this book, like my Ramadan series. I like reading books, and also digital books as well, not only physical. How I got these books was in Rafah, someone was selling books. One book was like $2, so like I was like, why not? Dries asks, what do you miss most from life before the war? Definitely miss having a routine. Today, I literally have zero routine. I don't know what I'm gonna do in the next minute, in the next hour, in the next day. Before the war, I had my entire week planned out. Like, I'll show you my journal actually. Here's my journal. Before the war, I used to plan out my entire day, minute by minute. And I honestly miss doing that. In the war, I can't really do that. Because who knows what's gonna happen in the next hour. Yeah, that's what I miss. I miss normalcy. Celine asks, why did you move from Dubai to Gaza? Since Gaza was never really a safe place. So I was born in the UAE, specifically in Ajman. So if I was born in the UAE, why would I move to Gaza? So I moved to Gaza because of schooling. Schooling was very expensive in the UAE. And especially after COVID hit, there were not as many jobs as usual. The best choice at the time was to move to Gaza to continue our education. And do I miss the UAE? I very much do. I miss the UAE so much. And I can't wait to come back. It's Ali asks, when will you evacuate Gaza, bro? Okay, so I was set to evacuate Gaza in May 9th. But then the Rafah border crossing, which is the crossing that takes you from Gaza into Egypt, got closed. So the border closed on May 5th, I was supposed to leave on May 9th. And now it's October and I haven't left yet. I was supposed to leave literally months ago. So I really don't know when I'm gonna evacuate. It just depends on when the border will open. Reem asks, what's your personal motto or life motto that you live by? I read this in one of the first pages of this journal. Uh, I'll read it for you. My life motto is, if they can do it, why can't you? And this quote really makes me think. If someone else can do it, why can't you genuinely? I mean, this isn't a motivational channel. This is a life about me documenting my life in Gaza, so I'm not gonna ramble, but that's my life motto. Sahar asks, does war ever make you feel sensitized emotionally? I think so, yeah. Things that used to like scare me or make me cry back then, do not now. But that could be mental maturity. So like, I can't really tell if I'm desensitized or I just matured mentally. How do you get Wi-Fi and electricity there in Gaza? So for Wi-Fi, you can rely on two ways. One, connected to a public internet connection. And to connect to this internet connection, you have to pay $1 for 12 hours. You pay $1 for 12 hours of internet. Or you can use an eSIM. Most devices aren't compatible with eSIMs. We have to resort to the other option. And for electricity, uh, we use solar panels. For me, I don't have a solar panel, but my neighbor does. So I just send my devices to his place. So that's how I charge and get Wi-Fi. So Snowcool asks, how do you want to celebrate your coming birthday in Gaza? Uh, I honestly don't know. Every day is the same, even for Ramadan. Ramadan felt like numb, like it didn't feel like Ramadan. Same with Eid. My birthday is gonna be like a normal day of me filling up my water gallons, of me selling my device to the charging station, of me recording. I'm not saying I hate recording videos. I absolutely love it. I love you guys so much. And you guys have been giving me so much support. I love you guys. So I'm not really sure how I'm gonna celebrate my upcoming birthday. We'll see how it is. I'll make a vlog on my birthday, I promise. The Swiss asks, how do you cope with stress in Gaza? For me, like, obviously I do stress. I stress a ton. But what makes me minimize my stress is knowing that God is watching me. God is always watching me. Whatever happens to me, I know God is watching. And he thinks this is best for me. God forbid, like, something bad happens. God thinks it's best for me. I just leave it with the hands of God. So for anyone asking what religion I am, uh, I'm Muslim. If it wasn't obvious enough. But that's how I cope with stress. I just know God is watching me. I4 asks, are you married? I don't think you guys believe me, but I am 15. I swear to God I'm 15. If there was something you could change about your life before the war, what would it be? I wish I was more grateful for like simpler things. Every day, I used to write five things that I'm grateful for. Every single day, in this journal. And honestly, I wish I wrote more. And before the war, I stopped doing that habit. I really regret that. So if there was something I could change, it was to be more grateful. Did you get a near-death experience in Gaza? Praying for you. Yeah, I had a near-death experience a few days ago. Let me tell you about it. So I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with like UPSs. They're devices that convert batteries energy to normal electricity. But my UPS, something felt weird about it. I took it to my cousin and he like opened it up and everything. And he told me that if you use this like two more times, it would have exploded. Like I honestly could have died if it did actually explode. But it didn't, alhamdulillah. That's like my most recent one. And like my other like, near-death experiences, uh, most of them are like uh, timing based. Like if I was here, um, 
five minutes earlier, something bad would have happened. Most of my near-death experiences are just like timing based. Skeleton asks, in which part of Gaza do you live? So I live in the south, I don't live in the north. So like if you guys hear anything about the south, that's probably like near me. Uh, I'm not in the north, no. Bilal asks, when do you think it'll end? I hope soon. I really do not know. This hasn't gone on for more than a year. So I think my neighbor hears me recording and he's doing like some weird noises to like stop me from recording. So honestly, whoever this neighbor is, fuck. Okay, I got too angry, but. Okay, so Naibu asks, which countries would you like to visit the most? Obviously, I want to visit the entire world. I like meet and meet all my viewers. That would be amazing. Like having a meetup in like each country. That would be so amazing. So which countries would I like to visit? Every country, honestly. Okay, what's your favorite Palestinian dish? So my favorite Palestinian dish would probably be msakhan. I had it once in Ramadan during the war and it was tasty. Yeah, so that's like my favorite dish, you could say. Goldie Closet asks, How do you and Abid know each other? Give me one second. Abud! Okay, I'm back. Come here. Abud, how do we know each other? Uh, so we're uh, from the same DNA. We're just brothers. Okay, you can leave now. What? Um, guys, <laughs> remember what I told you uh, about a watch? <laughs> so I just broke it right now. I just broke the glass on it. So yeah, that's unfortunate. Well, I guess that's a good way to end off the video. Subscribe if you haven't. Like the video, comment the... What, what should they comment? Yeah. Comment turtle! Okay. Comment turtle, comment the turtle emoji. Comment turtle. If you've made it this far. So, peace out. Um, goodbye. Watch my vlogs here. And yeah. Peace out.